What's going on boxing fans? It's Julian Williams with the distance. I have another video for you guys today. Another fancy matchup. This one of Vander Holyfield versus Ken Norton. Um this one um is actually a really good matchup from Tommy Gunn seven one one one. Um anyway on to this matchup. Um Ken Norton to me is very underrated, you know, if you ask me. Um he had a lot of um he had some pretty he had very good defensive ability. Um but sometimes there were just a lot of with his um style though, there was just a lot of um style nightmares for him. He was beaten, you know, in different ways by a lot of fires. You know, he was you know, um you know, you could um slug it out and beat him or you could um stay on the outside and beat him. But if you stay within Ken Norton's range, that's you know, when he kinda has a pretty very good fight. I think that against Muhammad Ali a lot of people talk about, you know, Ken Norton broke his jaw in the second round, which, you know, is a story of legend. Um, Ken Norton said in the Face and Ali documentary that I watched, like, back in early January, that, that you know, he had, um, just said that um, it didn't happen until the final round when he broke his jaw, or close to the final round. So, you know, who knows? You know, um, really, who knows um, the true story? Because, you know, the only people that know have to be... Muhammad Ali and um, Ken Norton, and but um, Ken Norton, you know that style, you know, he, his style was very um, distinct, if you ask me. See, um, Ken Norton did a very good job of throwing shots out of range. He had a very good right uppercut, but when he tried to throw the right uppercut, he he was um, sometimes he would get caught. You know, um, the uppercut, you're when you throw the uppercut, it's kind of an all or nothing type punch because you're open and you're free to get hit. You know, right there when you use the uppercut. And um, Ken, that's what Ken Norton used. Ken Norton used the um, uppercut. Now his, his right uppercut was probably his best punch. But with that style, he was very open to um, the right hand. If you um, and um, Evander Holyfield did a very good job of um, sneaking in the short right hand, the short right hook. And he, he did a very good job of sneaking that in and um, landing it. You know, sometimes he would land it at will. And because um, he was so fast with. He was so fast and the shot was so automatic that that you know Van Holyfield you know it just you know it just landed it was, it was automatic for him. But um, in a fight like this, you know, I see, I really see, I really see um, both fighters kind of standing within a certain range, not necessarily close, but kind of um, at, at from a little um, I think that both fighters kind of have a little distance from. Them. You know, not not necessarily you know a big gap, but kind of a you know um, Norton kind of staying within a certain range. Um, I think that honestly, in a fight like this, I think Norton will kind of um, kind of just kind of stand in that little crab-like um, defense that he had, and I, and I just see him um, attempting to counter counter Van der Holyfield. You know, the whole fight. You know, um, I think that you know in Van der Holyfield style, you know, um, Van der Holyfield. Um, did um was very susceptible to um the right uppercut. It was very susceptible to it. I think that Norton would be able to land it. See, um well like what I like about this fight is you got two men who are willing to stand in the middle stand at the center of the ring or move around and and pretty much land, you know, all kinds of short hooks. Because both fighters did a very good job at landing landing short hooks. But um I do see in a fight like this um, Ken Norton landing the overhand right and, and actually stunning Van de Holyfield because Ken Norton did a very good job of sneaking in his shots. You know, similar to um, Holyfield, you know, Ken Norton I think you know was kind of a master at it. You know, um, if you like, just look at his videos. He was a master at just sneaking in shots that um, that um, and, and catching fires off guard. He did a very good job of that. But um, in a fight like this, um, this this fight would not necessarily be. Your um your overall um slugfest. It wouldn't be a slugfest by any means. I just see two men, you know, at the cent you know, moving around the ring and um tr getting their shots off and trading a bit and then kind of fighting from a distance for a while and then kind of coming back in and um and um starting to fight again. You know, that's just some something that um I see with this fight. I um and um Evander Holyfield, you know, um did a good job of um kind of coming in. You know, and I'm um, getting the shots off, and um, but really, you know, Ken Norton, Ken Norton has a, had a lot of trouble with fires that would just kind, 
that didn't fight from a distance that would just come in and get the shots off. Kim Nguyen had a lot of trouble with fighters that would um, do that. And um, other than um, fighters that were able to come in and get their shots off, fighters that um, that could kind of um, overwhelm him as well, and fighters with you know a longer reach, he had a lot of trouble with fighters with that longer reach had longer reach than him. But um, Ken Norton, um, overall, I thought was underrated as far as his skill goes. Um, but um, in a matchup like this, I just see um, I see Vander Holyfield pulling off a um, very a very close um, like in the Frazier fight, I see him pulling off a very close um, split decision against Ken Norton because Ken Norton um, was was the type of fire that did that did get stronger towards the later rounds. He did. At times, start off fast, but um, he say he come in like the first round. He's he's getting his shots off, putting his shots together well, and then towards the end of the fight, you know, like rounds eight or nine, you know, he's coming back and he's building up momentum, and he's you know and he's starting to land very effective shots, you know, because he was in very good shape. He was in great shape, you know, um, being in you know being in the Marines, and it was either the Marines or the Navy, something like that, but um. But um, really, I just see um, a Van de Holyfield taking it, taking it to him, you know, in a fight like this. And I, but I just see um, a Van de Holyfield taking it by a very close, very close split decision in a fight like this. Ken Norton, I, I do think, is very underrated among a lot of the greats of the '70s, and I think that in a way, he's he's a bit overshadowed by by um, you know some of the fighters that beat him, you know, like um, Ali Holmes and um, Foreman. I think that he is overshadowed by these fighters but he's still you know a very valuable you know contender valuable asset to the heavyweight division back in the back in the 70s you know for a full um for almost about s seven years was um very um was a very good fighter and heavyweight division stayed on top you know stayed relevant in the division as well you know so anyway i'm just gonna go with van the holyfield split decision anyway that was the distance thanks for watching Peace.